Good evening. Welcome to Epiphany Lutheran Church in Richmond, Virginia. I'm Kevin Barger, the Director of Music Ministry. This is our Music Minute, where we're taking a look at the hymns we'll be using in worship tomorrow. And we're going to start tonight with, O oh God Who Gives Us Life. This is our hymn of the day tomorrow. It comes from All Creation Sings. And it draws on many images and themes from the Hebrew Bible. And this hymn connects those themes with the New Testament promise that God makes about all things being new through the covenant of love. Uh, the poet Carl Daw was an Episcopal priest and a son of a Baptist minister. He served for more than a decade as the executive director of the Hymn Society, which you've heard us talk about before in the United States and Canada. And he was ecumenically um, looking at the refreshment of hymns that could be used in worship. And so his text here is set to a somewhat lively tune. It's a beloved tune, especially in England, and oftentimes in England, this tune carries the words, it came upon a midnight clear, uh, which is not the tune we normally sing, but that was arranged by Sir Arthur Sullivan. So it has many connections. O oh God who gives us life. A nice tune. Maybe next Christmas we can try singing I Came Upon a Midnight Clear to that. Next we'll move to our sending hymn. This is Let, um, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. And this was written for Passion Tide, although we don't often sing it um, in Passion Tide. Uh, it has references to death and resurrection in Christ from Romans 6. And the translations on this are actually fairly close to the words of the original German, so that's kind of nice. The tune was written in 1788, and it was actually written for a different text, um, so it was moved to this, but there are persistent quarter notes in this, and it really mimics a walking theme, and so it likely fits this text a little bit better than what it had originally served. Let us ever walk with Jesus.
right, you can definitely hear the walking pattern in that. Next, we'll move to our communion hymn, Neither Life Nor Death. And this was written by Marty Haugen, although it does not sound characteristically like Marty Haugen. It was written for a gathering of ELCA bishops' assistants. He worked with the pastors to prepare and lead this worship service. And Romans 8 was actually part of the lectionary for the day that uh, they were doing this service. And this was sung as a communion hymn for the first time at that service. Um, Marty Haugen actually really felt that this text itself lended to a gospel style hymn, which you will clearly hear as we move over to the piano for Neither Life Nor Death. seeing that. And we'll close this evening with our gathering hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. And this was written, um, interestingly enough, by a Unitarian. And it's full of ironies as you look at it, though, and look at the text, because it makes its way then into many Trinitarian hymnals. So that's kind of a cool thing. The author was a linguist who claimed to be able to read 200 pages and recite back 100 of those 200 pages. The tune was written in 1849, and it was named for the soloist in the composer's choir at Central Baptist Church in Norwich, Connecticut. This is In the Cross of Christ I Glory.
All right. Well, we thank you for joining us this evening. Hopefully you enjoyed that and learned some things that you didn't know before. If you're joining us in person tomorrow, those services are at 8.30 and 11, and the 11 o'clock service is live streamed on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining, and we'll talk to you again next week.